Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is by TMG, and it's called The Deluvia Project. It plays two to four players. It's a worker placement game with airships, and you're also going to be placing down tiles to build, uh, I guess, The Deluvia Project. You'll be moving around, collecting certain tiles, collecting resources, building down certain buildings based on the round, and scoring population, which is the most important thing at the end of the game. If you have the most population, you're going to win. Anyway, it's a big game, a lot of crazy stuff going on. I'll try to explain as much as I possibly can, give you an idea of what a round is like, and then we'll come up and I'll give my review. So here we have the Deluvia project, and it's all set up for two players, and there's quite a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and get into it. This is the board of the game, and right here is where you're going to be building buildings. This over here is the building board, which is going to have all the different buildings set up for you. You're going to be putting all of the A's over here, the 1A's, and there's the 2A and 2B, 3A and 3B, 4A and 4B, 5A, 5B, and the 6's. Shuffle them up, and then make sure that they're in their correct spots, and then go ahead and place them down, face down, so that you cannot see them, except for the 1A's. Every player is going to get a player board, which will look something like this, and they're going to put a house on the one spot, and they're going to have these three markers that they'll set aside. These are going to be used during the game as production for coins, for uh, the different uh, resources here, the influence and whatnot, and of course the resources as well that you'll be able to gather throughout the game. Everybody's going to start with five workers, as well as a major worker, and you're going to have currency set aside, as well as these little cubes here. Everybody's got their little dirigible or flying airship that they're going to start with, and we're going to be just, just showing you blue here. These are all the resources in the game. you got pink, white, this teal color, and then of course black. These are going to be used to buy these things over here. There's a cost to them, as well as you're going to be gaining them from these spots here. The game is a worker placement game at its core, but it also has some tableau management and some tile building or tile placement. To begin, every player is going to start in turn order from randomly setting them on this little board here, one through four, as well as starting at round one here. As the game progresses on this track here, new buildings will open up for players to start with. Every player is also going to be placing their colors down here, these little tokens here, as as well as their little meeple marker here, which will symbolize their population, as well as ways to gain points every time these specific markers here hit 10. So we I went ahead and set this board up here, and it's a four by four grid. This is the extra pieces, along with these here, the ones that you won't use based on the number of players in the game, and it will tell you on the back what numbers they are for what numbers of players. You won't need to use these if you're playing with just a two player game, so you can set them aside. Otherwise, include them. This is the second wave of uh, the the tokens that will be on the board, and this is for the round six, or round seven, I should say, in which case you'll be placing them down specifically based on their uh, their letters. So this is a P and this is an L. But otherwise, they start up randomly. Okay, so the beginning of the game, the first player, which is blue here, is going to go ahead and select any column or row and place their airship down, and then they're going to pass. The next player is going to go in turn order, and then after everybody's placed, this player here is going to go ahead and attempt to collect. Now, when you collect, you're going to collect the one that is closest to your ship all the way down the line, and there's a cost to each one. This is a cost of one, two, three, and four. This one over here is the same one, two, three, and four. This player is going to buy first, so he'll be utilizing his coins to purchase these guys here. So if he bought these two, it would cost three. If he bought this one alone, it would cost three. If he bought all of them, it would be four plus three plus two plus one. When you buy, for instance, if he were to buy this here, which is two population, he's going to get this. And some of them are going to say different things, whether they be a little uh, hashtag, which is uh, something that stays in front of you, whether it be a little arrows that happen instantly, or whether it be a one times that is going to depend on which one you buy and how you're going to utilize it throughout the game. And then after he's gone ahead and bought some stuff, so if he bought these guys here, he'd get two resources, he'd get his two population, and these would go away. Whatever is left over on this space here turns into coins, and because this player can no longer buy this specific spot here, he's actually going to gain that coin to take back with him at his base. He can still purchase these guys here, so if he wanted to, he could spend one to purchase these two black resources, and he could spend two for this, and of course three for this five value, which he definitely is going to do, because that's going to give him five coins for three. Three. 
After players have done this and brought their airships back home, then the next portion of the game is going to begin, and that's going to be worker placement, in which players are going to be placing down their workers one at a time in turn order, selecting these spaces down here. There's colored spaces, I mean you have to place at least one of them of your color. There's white spaces that you can place as many as you would like of your color. And then you're also going to have these blue spaces here, which indicates if you ever place your big worker and you're the first person to place there with your big worker, you get a bonus aspect to the bonus ability in the game. This one over here is basically a space, and if you place one over here, you're going to be able to use your cubes to place down these little area controls markers. One worker for one, two for two, three for four, and if you placed your big guy, you get to place one additional one for free. Uh, this over here is going to allow you to buy these resources for three, as well as a, a bonus resource if you have your big guy. These over here, any spot you place them in is going to give you a specific resource and you can spend as many of these workers as you'd like, as well as an additional resource of that color. If you place them on these spaces here, that is going to cost you a coin and obviously you can't fill in a space that has already been placed down on. And these spaces open up in a three and four player game. This over here is going to let you move back and forth on your building track. So if you own a building, like for instance, this one here, you would be able to be gaining a certain amount of a specific currency. You cannot switch them back and forth with this space here. This one over here lets you place park spaces, which give you bonus abilities throughout the game. And this over here is going to let you place buildings provided you have the resources to spend on them. Over here is going to let you gain currency per worker that you place, and there's five spaces in total. And once all players have gone back and forth placing all of their tokens down on the board, that will end the specific round of the game. So if this was the case, that would end, that would be all of blues, and of course all of uh, greens or yellows or reds have been placed as well, depending on the number of players. Then that is going to end the round. Everybody's going to take these back and put them onto their player board. These are all going to fill in, and there's going to be this phase in which players are going to gather resources based on the buildings they control. So for instance, this one here is going to give you resources. Uh, so this will actually move this up two spaces. This over here is going to give you a resource of your choice and give you three coins at the end of every round. Uh, and they will get progressively better and better as the rounds go on. Obviously, this six space is very, very powerful. And in order to build here, you're going to need to actually have these tokens here. So you'll basically have to use one of these abilities put the tokens down, then you're going to be using this ability to build, placing this down after you spent the resources to build it, select one of these two different spaces in order to gain a specific currency that'll go on your board, and this board here tracks everything, and then that would be basically your building for the rest of the game, and you're going to be trying to utilize these spaces as best as possible. In a two-player game, you're using this area of the board, the lightest area. In a three-player, you get the next lightest area as well, and in a four-player, you get the entire area of the board, basically allowing you to have more space for the uh, a higher allotment of players in the game. You obviously want to build the best buildings you possibly can to score the most population points as possible, and this is your population marker. So at the end of the game, after the six, seven rounds of the game, so every round you're going to actually flip these over and uh, increase your odds of picking up different buildings, the sixth round is going to give you the big six pieces, and the seventh round will change this board up, and that will be the final round of play. Players are going to score points based on what's in their tableau, these specific things they've gained throughout the game, Game, their buildings, as well as whenever this space here hits 10, you'll gain population based on your population tracker over here. But it's basically a worker placement game at its heart. Now, I didn't go over a lot of things because there's quite a few things that there is to talk about in this game, but I wanted to give you a rough overview of what the game is like, what you'll be doing in the game throughout the seven rounds of playing the Deluvia project. Okay, so let's come up and talk about the game and I'll give you my review. So what do I think about the game, The Deluvia Project? Well, first of all, this game is a four player worker placement, but it also has tile placement and a little bit of tableau management. You'll be utilizing this board here, which I didn't talk about a whole lot because this game is huge and it's got a lot going for it. But this board here is going to track how many buildings you've built as well as how far along this track you go will give you specific amounts of population whenever you have your marker, this little marker here, go past the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, all the way around. Every time it hits a 10 spot, that's going to give you population points. And population points is how you win the game. Additionally, you're going to have those resource spaces that are going to give you points throughout the game, or as well as they're going to give you resources and currency, and I think they're called errors or something like that. But you're going to be gaining points uh, throughout the game. And you're going to want to change those around as the game comes to a close, because you can actually gain more points by manipulating your currency and how you're going to be gaining your income. There's also this big 
big board here, which is basically what you're going to be utilizing to purchase all of the buildings in the game. There's a ton of them. I can't even, I'm not even going to try and turn this sideways, but there's a ton of them. And as you purchase them, you're going to get additional victory points when you choose to purchase them. If you purchase them on the turn, they come up as well as you're going to get specific ones that will give you additional workers. So you normally only start with five, but there's three additional ones you can get based on grabbing these buildings, specifically choosing a specific path for them. These sixes are going to give you a boatload of either resources or currency, uh, as well as all the other ones do specific things too. So it's a lot of managing where you want to place your airship at the beginning of the game to score those or to take those specific tiles that you'll be utilizing for resources, for currency, for specific abilities. And there's probably like 20 of them, so I'm not going to go through them all, but they all do something that involves manipulating your resources and currency. Not only that, but some of them will allow you to pick up specific buildings that you could no, not pick up previously, and others are going to give you points at the end of the game or count as population markers, etc., etc. Then it comes to the worker placement phase, in which is about seven or eight spaces to place down onto the board and how you're going to use your workers to best manipulate the board for your specific goal. You'll be able to place buildings down at, uh, as well during that phase and, and gather windmills, which will give you uh, additional points as you progress the game. And then finally, after the seventh round, there's this final, like, this like breathing period of everybody gets the same basic choices and you do that one last thing and then everybody scores a boatload of points going around the board based on where your specific currency and tokens are and whoever has the most population of course is the winner i like this game a lot this game has a lot of interesting mechanics i i'm a big fan of tile placement and worker worker placement as well is a very nice add-on to the game i haven't played a lot of games that involve specifically building a city after doing worker placement but i have seen games that are similar to this one this one definitely is unique in its own way it's also really grand in another sense, it reminds me of games like Lesboa and whatnot, but this one's definitely a lot easier. Much like a lot of uh, the TMG games that have a lot going for them, a lot of complexities. In nature, the game seems crazy, but once you get into it, just like games like Francis Strike, you start realizing how simple uh, the game really is to understand and how complex it is to win. I think this game is going to be one of those games that people who have a mid to high tier level of strategy are going to enjoy. People who don't like a lot of luck because this game only luck in this game really is when the tiles get placed down the board and where you place your airships. Otherwise, it's pretty much what you choose in the game. If you like worker placements, if you like tile placement, all mixed into one, you're going to enjoy this game. There's a couple things that I guess were a little confusing about the game. For instance, this board here, as you collect, as you gain buildings, you move up this track here, and it only goes to nine, which is confusing because I thought it would go farther. But of course, it doesn't, and that's why it only goes to nine. So if you have that kind of question, maybe that will help you suffice. Additionally, there is a lot of these little different tiles here and they say different things they do different things you'll have to actually go into the rule book here and in the back there is a nice reference that tells you what all of the things are and there's just a lot of them some of them are a little bit more uh, complex in nature and others are pretty simplistic as far as what they need to do and what they do do <laughs> do do but also uh it, it has that like okay what's this what's that what's this and for the first one maybe two games you're not going to know everything that is going on in this game so it's a little bit of a learning curve if you don't mind those little things, though, the Lubia Project is definitely one I would suggest taking a look at. For me, this is Unfiltered Gamer approved. I'm keeping this in my collection. I enjoy games like this, and I like the mix of the mechanisms. I like the airship theme. I like the feel of the game, the quality of the components, and the unique nature of flying your airships around, gathering resources, and then building a city together for your own personal gain. Anyway, take a look down below. If the Lubia Project sounds like something interesting to you. Overall, though, liked it. I think you will, too.